Hey, what up, y'all? It's Flame Shading. This is week nine of my account challenge from 10,000 to the 100,000 mark. Uh, we're actually doing pretty well. We're just moving forward. So if you're new here, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to save as much money as possible as well as make money through smart investing. And then we're just showcasing that journey as well as new stocks and picks that I do as well as my watch list for the upcoming week and my portfolio breakdown in my Google Sheets as well. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Alright guys, let's go ahead and just look at how the week went. We can see that we actually got some volatility back into the market. Uh, we actually got some action. Um, we had a downward trend as well as a spy reaching on 411. And then on Friday, we actually had a really nice run up um, reaching around that all time high at 422. So that was really nice to see. Um, we've seen a little bit of revival as well as the week uh, moving a little bit up uh, from the previous week that ending it a little bit higher. If we just go ahead and look at the heat map as well, we can see that we actually had a really nice Friday. And that's why uh, the week has been up. Uh, this was primarily due to job numbers in the US, uh, but uh, still a nice week. So, just a quick account overview we can see that we're actually up on the month as well on the TFSA, as well as on my personal, we're also up on um, 8%. So, that's really nice to see as well. On the three month chart, we're actually up a lot more. So, that was really nice. Um, in terms of what the buy and sell that I did, I actually did buy uh, one more share of um, our innovation. This is an ATF uh, from Kathy Woods that I'm really bullish on and so it's seen some insane runs um, last year. It has seen a little bit of down but uh, I'm just using this to buy the dip as well as this ETF on the is at 156 and currently I'm buying at 110 so I'm giving myself a good uh, margin of safety. In terms of my next buys, I also um, started my position in the end phase. Uh, this is a stock I'm really bullish on and it's also on a dip. Um, they had some really nice earnings and they beat the estimates but they didn't have any guidance. So the stock uh, took a dip and that's why I used this opportunity to buy the stock even though the fundamentals weren't affected, the stock took a dip. So that's really nice. Um, I can see a lot of more potential on this. I'm buying it at 120 when it's all time highs around 210. So that's yeah, really nice giving me a good margin of safety as well. Uh, another buy I actually did was Etsy as well. These, this is another buy on both stock. I'm um, really uh, has almost had the same, same situation with the um, end phase. Um, Etsy is a um, consumer discretionary as well and they've seen a major run up um, and their earnings and, and this is a stock I see a lot of potential in the future so buying here um, I have 159 is what I did I'm already at 4% so that's really nice to see and I'll continue to just keep a watch on this I see a lot of potential in this although it was trading around the $100 so this is a little bit more of that one of stock so I just gotta keep that in mind. In terms of my next buys, um, what I did was I did sell a DFN. That was my dividend play. The reason being, I was just trying to move a little bit of my money into my DFSA, which is what I did. And now uh, I have a lot more cash. I'll be doing some buying next week with that cash um, for in that regard. Also, if you just go ahead and move into the DFSA, I did uh, do some buying some Bitcoin. So a really nice run up at $8, and that bought it at $5. So around that 60%, uh, a little bit higher than that return so I, what I did I just sold some shares there um, what happened is that it, it's uh, it listing within the Nasdaq as a result the stock uh, price uh, increased and this is not this has, doesn't have to do anything with the fundamentals so I uh, use this opportunity to sell that um, and I'll well, maybe if it dips really down I'll buy a little bit more shares back but I'll be using that money into other plays that are undervalued and they haven't seen any nice up um, because of that plays like that and another thing I did was I bought a little bit more stocks into CLS. This is a position I started, I believe, two weeks or one week ago. And this is a stock that's currently undervalued within the technology sector. And I see a lot of potential in this. So we saw a little bit dip down uh, at that $10 mark. So I used this opportunity to buy a little bit more also up on this buy. So in terms of my last buys, what I did was I bought HCLN. This is the Harvest Clean Energy ETF as well as ZCLN. So climate change is becoming a major issue in the world. These uh, both of these uh, ETFs have seen a major return. They invest in the uh, um, green energy sector and as well as green energy stocks. So I use this opportunity, as we saw that far during this week, to go ahead and buy into. And I, I plan on holding this for years to come as the green energy becomes a lot bit bigger, as well as something we really need in the world. So. So if we go ahead and just look at our Google Sheets, you can see the changes are, are effective. DFN is no longer, HCLN is one of my newer plays, as well as we see ARC uh, increase the stock in ARC. Uh, so the position is a little bit bigger, as well as we have it down on display. Um, if you go ahead and look at the other big plays, CLN, 
on my new place as well as CLS uh, and uh, at C as well as Enphase and I also had to just stock in um, my car ETF as well as automobile as well as my EV ETF so now I kind of want to stock and I also have to general them for diving into my portfolio chart breakdown which you see that I know still remains my biggest position at 13% and then I have uh, Unfused Scaling which is at 30 uh, 6.1% as well as Rolls Royce, which is another big position at 7.67%, and we are Green Land Renewables (GLN), which remains at a pretty sizable position at 4%, as well as I still have Grab Cash available, which is at 4%. I also own Alibaba, Big Farms as well, which is 2%. Uh, China Index Holding 2%, as well as uh, CLS, two, almost 2% as well. Etsy on 2% and Trace on 2%. So, some of these are my bigger position. I also want to mention the Lithium as well as HPO, H2O, um, as well as Solar. So, a lot of the green industries right here, as well as some of the water, which are some core industries I want to find a home for the long term. And the Arc, as well as Loop, uh, Loop Insights, which is uh, AI play, uh, remaining around that 2%. Looking at this industry breakdown, we can see the technology is my biggest position. This kind of has to do with dynamics as well because of some of my other plays, but this is something I'm really comfortable being in because technology has been going at a rapid pace and will continue to grow at a rapid pace for a few years from now. So as if I'm holding my place for a really long time, this is a fact that I'm really bullish on. As well as yeah, communication services, which is about 10%, renewable energy also around by 8%, is my biggest position. And then I have uh, auto parts and equipment around that 7% and materials around that 6% and then smaller amounts in terms of consumer debt discretionary as well as ETFs and crypto. Alright guys, looking at my watch list, FFN, GFN as well as ETFs still remain as a dividend place. I am still considering um, some of these plays. Um, they aren't seeing the dips that I do want to see so I'm still being patient on these plays. And as we see long term dip, uh, I'll use this opportunity to go ahead and buy these plays. In terms of growth plays, so um, PowerCorp, this is a stock I do want to buy this uh, week. Uh, it's on a really rise up, and this is a company that also owns Real Simple, so this is a play I also want to add on to. Hopefully, I'll be able to add on to this uh, during this week. Liberty Global also just reported earnings. I was hoping that maybe their earnings go down and I see a dip. Instead, we just saw a rise up, so I'll be looking to add on to this um, when we see a little bit of a dip. I just got to be patient. Buy a good price, so I have a high margin of safety, CIH as well. TMQ as well as uh, the Beta Pro two times bull ETF. Um, we are seeing the all time highs in the SP, so I'm still being patient on this. And we'll go ahead and just look at this uh, from a weekly basis. HEO did see some better dips, but it's also on the back up at 253 right now. So once it sees a little bit more of a dip, I'll go ahead and add on to this position. Um, NTWK, this is a play, it went up all the way up to like 560. It's all the back down at 425, so I'll be adding on to this uh, this week. As well as FSI, if you see go around $3, I'll be adding on to this as well. In terms of my recovery plays, I see Cineplex. Cineplex is seeing a dip around $12.50. If you see around $12, I'll be adding on to this as well. Um, buy price is $10.50, but uh, $12 I'm honestly really comfortable with, especially what uh, the Cineplex is going to be doing this uh, summer. Uh, Air Canada as well, we've been seeing a bit of a dip, but uh, Air Canada, uh, I'm still being patient on this, and I, when it comes to these uh, numbers, I want to see. For the price, I'll go ahead and add a good amount of shares into it. Icon as well. Icon, I'm looking for around 1.6 or 1.5. Once we see that dip on Icon, I'll be adding it to this for the recovery. I want to thank you for making a time this video. I am um, also going to be making some more investing videos, and I appreciate all the support I've been receiving in terms of all the likes and subscribers, as well as all the comments. Um, in terms of what you can do, you if you, I'll leave my link in the description below with Corbell Simple, that is the commission free trading platform that we've been using really nice as well as useful for long-term investment holdings because we all as we all know cash is not the best to hold your own money because cash is going to degrade in terms of inflation um, with inflation being at two percent your the amount of cash that you have is always going to be decreasing you want to always have the even if you're investing and you want a safe approach there's always good safe approach that can give you five percent return so definitely something to look into